Going from the innovation in TV and aggregation to the specifics of content, uh, we now have um, two, uh, two people who are experts at looking at content. One is Dan Fay from Paramount, um, fellow Australian, and then also um, Richard Broughton from Ampere Analysis, talking about Paramount Plus, essentially, but also other Paramount content and the mountain of content that they have and what they're doing with it. And also, congratulations, Paramount Plus coming to a screen near you in the UK. So I hear. Great. Well, thanks very much for, uh, for joining us today, uh, Dan. Thanks for having me. Have you here. Right. Um, quick question. We spoke in advance, uh, so I've got a little bit of a feel for what you do uh, at, uh, at Paramount. But if you wouldn't mind for the, for, the, for the audience giving a quick introduction to who you are and what your role is at Paramount, that'd be fantastic. Yeah, for sure. So um, Paramount, for those of you who don't know, it, it was Viacom CBS until uh, February, I think, when we rebranded to Paramount. Um, and Viacom CBS was actually combined from Viacom and CBS in 2019. Um, so the things that you may know about Paramount is Paramount, the studio, the film studio, the Showtime um, studio, Nickelodeon, Comedy Central, MTV, Channel 5 in the UK. So for the first time, uh, all of that's under one corporate roof and now called Paramount. And I look after the streaming products in the UK market. So there are, there are a selection of different streaming products, I think, that fall under your, your remit. So what, what, how would you describe and characterise those and where, where would each of them fit? Yeah, so um, Paramount's got a unique model in that it's, um, it's got a very big footprint in SVOD, but it's also got a very big footprint in free streaming with Pluto TV, so Paramount Plus and Pluto TV. Pluto TV is the biggest free streaming platform in the US and it's been in the UK for, for four or five years. We can talk about that a bit later. But in the UK, we're, we're, it's a unique market for us in that we've got Channel 5, a public service broadcaster here as well. So we've got My5, the PSB player, the BVOD player. So in this market, we've got AVOD, BVOD, and we're in June 22nd, as Natalie mentioned, we're about to launch Paramount Plus. So we'll have a fully fledged footprint in SVOD as well. So that's, that's quite a complex portfolio of products to manage because I guess from Paramount's wider perspective, you've got those three streaming products in the UK, there are a bunch of others internationally, you've got your, I don't want to call it historic um, content brands, but the, the yeah. current or the, the big, um, big channel and studio brands that everyone knows and loves. How do you manage all of those together? Where do the streaming products fit in or intersect relative to your um, more well-known or more historic Yep. Yeah, I guess there's two parts to that, isn't there? There's the how do those services fit in relation to each other and then how do they fit in relation to our business. The, um, it's sort of an easy puzzle for us because SVOD is in a distinct market of its own. Um, but then when you look at, at BVOD, you know, My5 and Pluto, AVOD side by side, the, the Pluto service used to be managed from our European team in Berlin and we've taken it into the UK business about 12 months ago, 18 months ago. We grappled with that exact question. You know, how, how does an AVOD service, a fast service, linear service, fit against a BVOD thing? And when you look at the, the market, you can see in the UK, and I think Andy might have touched on it, there's sort of this um, bifurcation of the market going on actually, where you've got this very big segment of IP only homes. So homes that just don't have a traditional linear connection anymore, be that free view, you know, cable, satellite. Um, and that's numbering about 3 million homes now. And that's forecast to get you know, up to 10 million homes by 2030. Um, the rest of the homes have linear connection, and that's where we see most of our BVOD, you know, that's where the engagement with the terrestrial broadcast is. My Five's heavily um, consumed in that segment. Um, but Pluto is playing into this IP only um, segment because those homes tend to be VOD first, they tend to be SVOD first, and Pluto is almost tracking SVOD consumption and SVOD penetration in this market. So they're actually quite complementary to each other. Um, in, in the US as well, we see um, you know, about 80% of Pluto's uh, users are also paid streaming users. So we see Paramount Plus and Pluto as being highly complementary, and we see Pluto and My5 playing in distinct parts of the market, albeit there's an amount of overlap there. So that's interesting. So, so My5 my and Pluto, despite operating nominally fairly similar models, are actually targeting pretty different audiences on the whole. Yeah, on the whole, and also the proposition is different. Yeah. So, you know, Pluto is, so My5 is our platform, it's the best of Channel 5. Pluto is a linear service, and it's, a, it's not 
our platform in that it's we bring in a whole a lot of um, you know content providers into the mix. Um, and I guess evidence of how they're complementary is that um, since the start of the year, Channel 5 has had five fast channels on Pluto, branded fast channels um, that are performing really well for Pluto. That's coincided with the best months that my fives had and Channel 5's had. So yeah, the, for, from, from our you know, close scrutiny of those services, they're complementary. Yeah. Well, perfect. Let's, let's come back to the ad, the ad funder products um, later in the conversation, but um, I wanted to dig into it a little bit on around the subscription side of the market. Um, Paramount Plus is obviously the, the biggest brand um, that's, that you have and is shortly launching. I believe you've also got a showreel that um, we can deliver if uh, the ops team could play that to give us a good idea of what's coming. Perfect. So looking forward to that. So what can you tell us about uh, Paramount Plus at this stage uh, in terms of what it will look like in the UK? Yeah, so it, uh, remind me, I didn't answer your second part of the question before around how, how the streaming fits with our business, but um, it'll launch on June 22nd in the UK. Um, we're very excited about it. For the first time, it's going to bring together all of the output that resides in our company, along with a whole tranche of new originals that we're making. You saw some of their Halo um, has already launched in the US. Um, you know, it's, it's derived from the console game. It's um, exactly produced by Steven Spielberg. Great reviews. We've held that back for the UK launch. Um, but it will bring together our um, feature film slate, bring together our Showtime premium scripted output, um, reality from MTV, comedy, kids, family. So for us, we're, we're very confident about this because for the first time it brings together um, an offer that in this market, is a little bit unmatched in terms of its, it, the volume of content is significant, eight to 10,000 hours, but it's covering something for everyone in the family. It's got kids, sci-fi, comedy, um, paranormal, um, reality, premium scripted. So um, lots for us to be excited about. Um, we'll get it into market 22nd of June in partnership with Sky. Uh, it will be bundled into Sky Cinema, um, which again is a differentiator with our model of how we're approaching streaming, which is to leverage the existing business and existing partnerships we have in market. So in this market, we're hard bundling with Sky Cinema. Uh, we'll do the same in France with Canal Plus, and you know, we're taking this approach into various markets. Yeah. Let, let's, let's touch on that distribution point in, in a second, because sure. I think that's, that's a characteristic that's emerging as increasingly important in mm. the streaming market. Yeah. Um, but I, I first wanted to ask you, you as a, as a business, Paramount as a business, it's quite an ambitious streaming target. Uh, I believe it's about 100 million subs you're targeting worldwide over the next couple of years. Now it's obviously, as we've, we've heard from the existing speakers, increasingly crowded market. Um, there's arguably a cost of living crisis arriving right now, or, or at least on the horizon in different territories. So how are you aiming to hit that, that punchy objective? And presumably Paramount Plus will be at the forefront of that, um, of that growth in subscribers. Yeah. Um, across all geographies, what's, what, what's the strategy? Yeah, so, um Th that, that 100 million is domestic, US and international. Yep. But, but I guess a good way into answering that is to go back to what I should have answered before is, for, for us streaming is, a, is a, an extension and a, uh, an incremental move forward for our entire business. Um, and so we're very confident that we can, we can meet those streaming targets because we're leveraging our whole business into streaming and we're leveraging streaming back into our business. So to give you some examples of that. Um, Sonic the Hedgehog was a theatrical release, uh, Sonic the Hedgehog 2 um, performed really well this year. When you look at that, uh, you see a few different characters. You see um, that the release of the theatrical release of that movie generated significant streaming volumes on the original Sonic. Now we're going to bring out uh, Sonic Hedgehog 3, but also we're going to bring out a kids animated series. That's going to have a run on Nickelodeon, mm -hmm. linear then that's going to come into Paramount Plus uh, as well. So we've got this sort of flywheel in our business that goes from theatrical to linear to streaming or back the other way. Um, that means that we're very confident getting 100 million because we're leveraging all of these different assets. Um, and for us, that's a, for us, that's a hallmark of our strategy. We don't see 
our current business as some sort of anchor to our streaming ambitions. We see our current business as critical, as, as a driver for our streaming ambitions. So heavy levels of cross-promotion across the different services. Yeah, it's cross-promotion. It's yeah. like, and really it's sort of franchise invigoration mm. as well. Um, you, you could look at Transformers. You know, we're going we're to keep um, building out that film franchise and that's going to have a kids animated series. So we're trying to take what we've got, give a linear, a linear you know, outside of Paramount Plus presence to it, something in Paramount Plus, something in theatrical. Um, be the same in the UK. We're producing a lot of originals um, uh, for Paramount Plus in the UK, some scripted, some unscripted. And perhaps the unscripted ones have a home on Channel 5 in the UK. So we've got this, this, this model of um, really financing, mm. less so cross-promotion, although that's a big part of it, but financing the investment in streaming. Yeah, yeah, perfect. So let's come back to that distribution point and around partners like Sky. Mm. Um, now we've seen, I think, increasingly that many studio groups are being evaluated on the, um, the, the, the performance of their streaming products yeah. and that some of the recent stock hits that a few streaming services took earlier in the year um, was perhaps a warning from the investment market around their perception of where the ceiling might be for, for streaming services. So there seems to be an imperative for many um, studio groups who are looking at the international opportunity to accelerate growth in the businesses mm. and an obvious angle of attack is making partnerships to drive scale very quickly. Uh, now it seems you're, you're taking that approach with, with Sky in the UK and in other territories. What can you tell us about that model and how it works and, and how crucial it is for your, your strategy? Yeah, uh, it, it, it is core to our, the way we think about the markets and the way we think about Paramount Plus. And I guess there's two reasons there. One is we've always been a very partnership focused business. We have very big partnerships in each market and the UK is a, is a great example of that. Um, but also, um, there's lots of advantages to working with partners. You know, it gets you into a number of homes straight away. Um, it makes your cost of acquisition lower because uh, you're sharing the marketing um, with the platform. Churn is lower on those platforms. So there's lots to there's lots to like about it. So yeah, you know, we'll launch into Germany and Italy um, later this year with Sky. As I say, we're, we'll launch into France with Canal Plus. Um, where we can and where we have a big partner, we will work with that partner to launch. And of course, we're focused on the D2C uh, element of this as well, because one of the great things about Paramount Plus is that it brings the, the richness of this, this output that we have and packages up in, for the first time into a standalone offer that gets out into um, an area of the market that was previously held to the domain of pay TV. So as, as a consumer in the UK, you'll be able to sign up through Sky, but also independently to the yep. product. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Um, lovely. And who, who, who else do you see as important distribution partners? I assume the likes of the Samsungs of the world yeah. and um, streaming devices like the Roku's and so yep. on. Yeah, exactly. Yep. And, and, and you know, we, we have great relationships with Samsung already and all of the platforms in this market because we've got pay brands, but we've got Pluto TV, which is on all the, all the main connected TV devices and sticks and various things. But My5 is um, you know, universally distributed in this market. Um, so we have pre-existing relationships with the major platforms and devices in this market and others. Uh, so definitely we, we will look to leverage those. And many of them are already in place at launch mm -hmm. um, because we have, you know, we have global partnerships across those. Yeah, perfect. So let, let's come back to the advertising model. So you, you touched on that earlier, and I, I wanted to dig into something you, you mentioned around uh, My5 and, and Pluto TV and the distinction. So there's obviously a little bit of overlap going on there in that My5 or Channel 5 is creating channels to move on to Pluto. Yeah. How, do you, how do you think about the content strategies of the two of those? Are they, are they very distinct, um, or is there, an increasing, is there increasingly a sort of central plan for the two, uh, two products to sit side by side? Yeah, the, the, the content, the way we think about the content strategy for Pluto is very different from, from My5. Um, we think about the content for Channel 5 and, and we, we try and make My5 the best of Channel 5. Um, Pluto, we look to um, partner with a lot of content providers and what Pluto is really good at is taking known IP and known franchises that might not be recent. They might have, be, you know, they might have had their, their best days five, six, seven years ago, but we put them on the platform, we package them in a fun and contemporary and creative way um, and we get them into those homes that for whatever reason have done away with their linear connection 
And remember, Pluto is a linear, it's a, it's a linear um, service. What we find on Pluto is um, there's no one channel that dominates the consumption. You know, no, no one channel has more than five or six percent share of that platform. So the, the channels are very deliberately focused on um, a particular program or a particular genre or, or a particular um, uh, you know, cohort. So we do think about them very differently, and that's why they're complementary. Um, and we, we talked to a lot of partners, and we are partnered with lots of um, content partners. And in the US, is a roster of who, anyone who's producing content in the US is partnering with us on Pluto. For them, it's a great way of um, building back some consumption that they're perhaps losing from linear, as linear sort of comes in a little bit, um, but also monetizing content that they've invested heavily in, but is maybe sitting on the shelf. Mm. Um, so yeah, we do think about them very differently. Yeah. Yeah. And, and does that does that difference hold from an ad um, an ad sales and strategy standpoint? Are they run as separate businesses, or is there there increasing the convergence between the two? So they are run as separate businesses, although that from an ad sales point of view, Sky Media is our um, yeah. ad sales partner in this market, and Sky Media reps My Five and our linear portfolio and Pluto as well. Um, but we also work with programmatic partners uh, on Pluto. So I think the, I guess where they're distinct from a content point of view, from, a, from an advertising proposition point of view, they're very similar because what you get with Pluto is broadcast-like, you know, there's no pre-rolls, there's no intrusive ads, it's a linear experience. You join a channel, you may have just missed the ad break, you don't get it for another 10 minutes or so. Um, and it's big screen inventory that's broadcast quality. So. From a, from a sales and an advertiser and a brand point of view, it's TV-like inventory. So there, there's, there's more similarities there. Yep. Than, yeah. yeah, perfect. Now, Pluto, I wanted to pick up on, I know your remit is primarily um, UK-based, but one of the most interesting developments I've seen personally from the perspective of Pluto is the partnership with Nent or now via yep. Playgroup in Scandinavia. Yep. So as I understand it, um, via Free, which is the, currently the, um, the, the ad-supported product run by um, the via Play Group will be folded into Pluto. Via Free was classically, I believe, a, a big licensor of, um, of Paramount content, yep. uh, and they will handle now the the ad sales strategy for for Pluto um, locally. What, what can you tell us a little bit about? Can you tell us a little bit more about that sort of deal and, and whether it's the sort of model that you're going to be considering more widely in the future? Yeah, definitely. No, you're right. So we, we have been long-standing partners of Viaplay or Viasat, as it was in, in the Nordics. And they've, as you said, had a, a big, you know, they're one of the biggest commercial broadcasts across the Nordics, and Viafree was their on-demand service. Um, we'd been looking to get into the Nordics with Pluto. And over a period of time, we had a conversation with the guys at, at Nent, now Viaplay, saying, um, we've got this very sophisticated, fast platform. Um, we've got a good ad tech layer. We know, how to, we know how to monetize this. We know how to make it work. We're going to bring a whole lot of global content into the market. You know, would you partner with us? And that conversation progressed to them saying, well, if we could arrange this such that we will um, manage the ad sales for Pluto, we can put our content in there. Pluto can become our platform. So they close down via free. Um, then we can come up with something. And that's, that's what the partnership model is. They close down Viafree, Viafree goes into Pluto. Uh, we bring the platform and the expertise in operating it, running it from a tech, um, ad tech, marketing. Uh, they provide the ad sales team uh, and some content as well. So it's a great model, works for them, works for us. And I guess that's what's distinct about Pluto from Paramount Plus and My5 is that we've got a very open model in terms of how we partner with, um, you know, in different markets. We would like to see more companies come into the Pluto fold because it's genuinely a platform that's not, not for Paramount. It's, a, it's something we're trying to hold open as a, as a vehicle for other partners to come on board to. Well, it certainly feels that in an increasingly crowded market that you as a business have a huge amount of international but primarily US-based content. Yeah. Local partners can help boost scale or uh, appeal in different audience groups as well as perhaps support with boots on the ground for the ad, ad sales strategy where market perhaps might be too small to put a ton of investment into. Yeah, that's right. And look, we, we've made the investment over many years. You know, we've, we've invested you know, hundreds of millions in that platform and, it's, and it shows it's slick and it's simple. Um, we've got the, the ad tech um, tier all set up. We're integrated with our device partners. I guess that's a key calling card of Pluto is we don't just sort of put it onto the device like Samsung and hope for the best. We work really closely with Samsung. You know, we, we get them to share in the success. So we've got all this here. And so, you know, if you're another broadcaster or another country, you're saying, well, we ought to get into fast. How do we do it? Um, you know, we're talking to them about come and partner with us because we've, we've done a lot of the, the hard work. Yeah. 
Well, it's very exciting. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing where it goes. Good. Thank Lovely. you. Well, I think, we're, I think we're at the end of the session. So if I could ask everyone to uh, join me in thanking Dan for his time. Great. Hugely appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.